CBSE Biology Class 10 Chapter 16 Management of Natural Resources Part 3B Let us learn the biology chapters through questions and answers which most of the students prefer. Note that PG here is for page, PR for paragraph in your textbook. Questions are in yellow color, answers are in white color. How people's participation made remarkable recovery of West Bengal forest. The forest department changed its strategy making a beginning in the Arabari forest range of Midnapur district. Here at the instance of a far seeing forest officer A.K. Banerjee, villagers were involved in the protection of 1,272 hectares of badly degraded sal forest. In return for help in protection, villagers were given employment in both silviculture and harvesting operations. 25 percent of the final harvest uh, are allowed fuel, fuel wood and fodder collection on payment of a nominal fee. With the active and willing participation of the local community, the sal forest Abarabari underwent a remarkable recovery. By 1983, a previously worthless forest was valued rupees 12.5 crores. <coughs> How human intervention affects the water as a resource? Water is a basic necessity for all terrestrial forms of life. We studied in class 9 about the importance of water as a resource the water cycle and how human intervention pollutes water bodies. However, human intervention also changes the availability of water in various regions. Why there is water scarcity in many areas in spite of monsoon bounty? The regions of water scarcity are closely correlated to the regions of acute poverty. A study of rainfall patterns does not reveal the whole truth behind the water availability in various regions in India. Rains in India are largely due to the monsoons. This means that most of the rain falls in a few months of the year. Despite nature's monsoon bounty, failure to sustain water availability underground has resulted largely from the loss of vegetation cover, diversion for high water demanding crops and pollution from industrial effluents and urban waste. How was the irrigation system in India before the arrival of British? Irrigation methods like dams, tanks and canals have been used in various parts of India since ancient times. These were generally managed by local people and assured that the basic minimum requirements for both agriculture and daily needs were met throughout the year. The use of this stored water was strictly regulated and the optimum cropping patterns based on the water availability were arrived at on the basis of decades and centuries of experience. The maintenance of these irrigation systems was a local affair. How the irrigation system India changed after the arrival of British? The Arrival of the British changed the systems of irrigation. The conception of large scale projects, large dams and canals traversing large distances were first conceived and implemented by the British and carried on with no less gusto by our newly formed independent government. These mega projects led to the neglect of the local irrigation methods and the government also increasingly took over the administration of these systems leading to the loss of control over the local water sources. 
by the local people. Why do we want to build large dams? Large dams can ensure the storage of adequate water not just for irrigation but also for generating electricity as discussed in the previous chapter canal systems leading from these dams can transfer large amounts of water great distances for example the Indira Gandhi canal has brought greenery to considerable areas of Rajasthan why large dams ultimately create discontentment among people mismanagement of the water from large canals has largely led to the benefits being cornered by a few people there is no equitable distribution of water thus people close to the source grow water intensive crops like sugarcane and rice while people further downstream do not get any water the unhappiness of these people who have been promised benefits which never arrived are added to the discontentment among people who have been displaced by the building of the large dams and its canal network what are the reasons for opposition to the construction of large dams criticism about large dams address three problems in particular number one social problems because they displace large number of patients and tribals without adequate compensation or rehabilitation number two economic problems because they swallow up huge amounts of public money without the generation of proportion benefits three environmental problems because they contribute enormously to deforestation and the loss of biological diversity why the people who have been displaced by various development projects aren't happy the people who have been displaced by various development projects are largely poor travels who do not get any benefits from these projects and are alienated from their lands and forests without adequate compensation the austies of the tower dam built in 1970s are still fighting for the benefits they were promised end of this part your students share your doubts and questions to this email the mail id is given here the question answers of this chapter will be continued in next video